Hi, welcome to another edition of Bauer Business Bites. My name is David Tai, the Managing Director of Bauer Media here in Northern Ireland. Each week we catch up with someone in business and we talk to them about what's hot right now. Well, this week I'm really pleased to say that we are joined by Mark McBride. He's the Regional Manager for Mile Cross Financial here in Northern Ireland. Mark, welcome to Business Bites. Uh, good morning, David. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's really good to see you. Um, we've, uh, we're limited on time, so we'll crack straight into the discussion. Sure. Tell us about Milecross. You've been around for a while here in Northern Ireland, haven't you? We have. Uh, Milecross was formed in Northern Ireland back in 2005. Um, and since then, we've grown into one of the largest financial advice businesses in the province. Um, we have our head office in Newton Ards. We also have regional offices now in Scotland and in Manchester with close to 100 advisors throughout the province, England and Scotland. Uh, our advisors give advice on a, a full range of financial planning products right through from, from mortgages to family protection, life cover, critical illness, income protection, business protection, and then through onto the next phase of sort of life planning, investments, pensions, planning for retirement, inheritance tax. So the, the full range of financial products. Um, we're also part of a, a bigger organization called the Open Work Partnership, who are again, one of the largest uh, networks of financial advisors in the United Kingdom. And being part of Open Work uh, enables us to provide our clients with some uh, award-winning um, products and services, and also to give our advisors the service and support that they need to help their, their clients. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's a pretty comprehensive uh, description of what you guys are up to. So I imagine yeah. that um, <laughs> over the last 12, 18 months, people have been sitting at home. They probably have more time to think potentially. So what kind of impact has that had on your business? Because I would imagine things like pensions, uh, if they're anything like me, you kind of only remember that you've got that type of thing if you're lucky enough to have one when you get a letter in the post that tells you that you've got one. So um, how, how have you found people's attitudes have changed in the last period? Um, I think the last 12, I think we're 18 months now into this pandemic, uh, has focused a lot of people's uh, mindset into their, their, their financial situation, whether it's looking at their, their protection products, uh, making sure that they've got the right level of protection in place, looking at their mortgage to make sure again that they're maybe not paying too much, but also, I think initially when uh, the pandemic hit, more of us were at home. People were looking at old bits of documents that they had meant to do their pensions. They, they, they were able to sit down and pull these things out that um, they wanted to review for the last lot of years and never got around to it. So we have seen a, a big increase in people wanting to review their pensions with us, coming to us and saying, look, I've had this for years. I've got three or four pensions from previous jobs. Um, can we now sit down and look at it? I want to know what they're doing. I haven't a clue what they're doing. So if anything, the, the pandemic has focused people's awareness of financial planning, their own financial circumstances, and more so and more importantly, the need to speak to, to somebody about what we can do. So we've seen a very um, big increase uh, in, the, as I said, the people coming to us with inquiries and looking for our, our advisors to help them. Yeah, sometimes um, you know, the, these areas, especially things like mortgages and, <coughs> and pensions, they can just seem really onerous and really big and clunky things to, to attempt to try and change. Uh, yeah, how easy is it these days to, to switch things and move things across to, to different products? Well, anything we do involves a certain amount of analysis and discussion with clients. We, we don't just move something for the sake of it. We, we'll sit down and we'll find out what a client's goals are. We'll find out about their, their personal situation. Um, and then we have uh, a team of administrators and support that will do a full analysis for us. Um, so the actual switching of a pension could be quite easy, but there could be three, four, five, six months of work involved in analysis uh, and gathering the information because some people have pensions that have been sat for maybe 10, 15 years. Some pension providers aren't about anymore. Um, so the, the process is very involved and we like to make sure that uh, we spend the time with the clients that they fully understand what they're doing and that we do a proper analysis um, because it's not just as simple as saying, I've got these pensions sat here that I need to move. 
you could lose some benefits um, that are associated with those pensions by doing that. And ultimately, we need to make sure that what people do is right for them uh, and that they are getting proper advice and, and guidance in what they do. Yeah, because it might seem right today, but it, it may not be right tomorrow, I suppose. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So this, you know, in the idea of pensions, I hear a lot about this pensions time bomb. Um, it's a big phrase that gets used. What is that and, and how can we deal with that today uh, as, as people who might be looking into this area? I guess the, t the time bomb is that people aren't doing enough about their pensions. Um, people always say, oh, well, the government will look after me or I'll get my state pension. But the reality is that that goalpost is moving further and further. The age at which we can retire and get our state pension will move from 65 to 67 to 68. So whenever some of the younger people um, come to retire, they could be retiring in their 70s. So the, the importance of doing something now uh, and looking at pension planning is, is, is vital. Uh, the reality is most people leave it too late um, because they only start thinking about their pension maybe a couple of years before they retire. Uh, we're really passionate as advisors about pension planning. It's the only time that the government is going to give people money. Uh, we hear so much about the government taxing people, increasing taxes, taking money off people from inheritance tax, but making a pension contribution, the government are actually going to give you money. So for every hundred pound that you want to put into your pension, the government's going to give you another 20%. So there's another 25 pound getting added into your pension. So who doesn't want some free money? So the younger that we can, um, the younger ages that we can start to talk to people and influence them and educate them about pension planning, then that can help them in future years. And it can be very difficult um, to see 10, 15 years down the line uh, in retirement. But we have some people that are going to be retired for the same amount of time that they work. So they need an income, they need money in retirement, they need a fund. And by starting that journey early, by looking at your pension plans, by reviewing them uh, and making sure that they're in the right funds, that they're invested well. All of that will help um, your future uh, goals and future plans. Yeah. Um, wh what would you say to people? Because, you mm -hmm. know, you'd hear people say, well, you know, I, I'm not getting as much out of the bank as, as I, you know, as, as I used to. And, you know, I put it into bricks. I'll put it, I'll buy it. Well, you know, try and get a flat and, and see what that does for me. Is, is, there a, is there a sort of response to that, that argument? There is, but there's no clear cut. Everyone's uh, circumstances are different. We know that money sat in a bank account is actually eroding. Um, if people are lucky to get half a percent in the bank, we know inflation's sitting at 3.2%. So that money's being uh, eroded. Um, also, people saying putting their money in bricks and mortar, that might be the right position for somebody, but there's other considerations. There's, there's the tax implications of investing in property with paying additional charges for stamp duty, for maintenance, and then capital gains tax uh, on the disposal of that property. Pensions are very tax efficient products. They, they grow tax uh, virtually free of tax. Uh, the money that you put in, you're getting tax relief on that. Uh, and then the bit that nobody likes to think about is on death, that money can be passed very tax efficiently to your next of kin and to your beneficiaries. So that's why we're very passionate about pensions. Not only are they a great savings vehicle but they're also one of the most tax efficient investments that, that you can make yeah uh see I, I hadn't thought of that last bit that's why that's why you're the regional manager of mile cross <laughs> financial and, and i work in radio um but you know i think that's i think that's really really interesting and uh do you think that the that as as the years have gone on people are getting better and, and starting earlier because it didn't seem like it was on the agenda when i was young I think the, the government certainly tried to help that by introducing auto enrollment and these uh, other pension uh, schemes. But we are finding that we are being approached by more employers to come in and, and speak to their, their employees now about financial well-being as a whole, to talk to the younger generation about pension planning. Um, so I think for us, that's a very welcome conversation um, because the, the sooner people start, uh, the, the easier it is to sort of build up money and maintain that. And with regular financial planning and reviews with an advisor, we can make changes as their lifestyle changes. We can make changes if the markets move uh, and we make sure that their, their money's always invested in the right way for them. Well, Mark, it's been fascinating talking to you. You've opened my eyes to a number of areas there. All the contact That's info good. for Mark's coming up shortly. And thanks for being our guest this week. Thank you. Delighted to be on board.